Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition and always make sure that the book is in front of you as you as you and I are doing, doing the work. Today we'll solve the last two problems in the in the last section, section number four of exam nine, that you will find on page number 482. Please turn to it. Page 482, problem number 37. As you can see, it's already on the blackboard, the penultimate problem, and then we have 38. Let's take a look at it. It's a very simple, very straightforward problem. We are given the figures in the chart here, which you'll see in the in, in the book in front of you. I have reproduced them here. And the question simply is median for 2013. Median for 2013 is how much greater? Is how much greater than median for 2012? Essentially, we're looking for the difference. 2012, and that's all there is. There's nothing much to it. We just have to pay attention to make sure that we that we don't end up making some silly mistakes. As you can see, there are nine entries here. If there are nine entries, which means the fifth entry will be the median, so we have three here, four, five, there you go, this fifth entry will be the median, provided, provided that the entries are in order, we have to arrange them in order, and let's take a quick look at it, and you will see that they are in order, at 36, five. here's, these two need to be changed, but we're not going to bother with it, we're not going to bother with it, because as far as we're concerned, it doesn't really matter, because it does not impact the fifth, fifth entry, let's go to this side, six, six or seven, five, 387, 385. There you go, there's another one. So strictly speaking, these two have to be changed. The, the numbers that we arrange in order, either ascending or descending order, before we can pick the middle one as a, as a median. But like I said, it doesn't matter as far as we are, we are concerned because it doesn't impact the fifth entry. There you go, we're done. 477, 477 minus 464. And what you will find is that, if you look at the book, uh, you're in front of you there, you'll find is that out of laziness, I did not put down the decimal, but they do actually have a decimal point here. That's all it is. So put down the decimal, figure out the difference. This is going to be 3, and that's going to be 1. That's it. 1.3 is the simple answer. And that's all there is. Let's go, let's go to the next one, shall we? Number 20. Number 20 is the interesting one. I didn't mean number 20, I meant number 38. Number 38 says, oh, we are still dealing with the same table. We are still dealing with the same table. And here's the question. Here's the question. We are told, we are told that 2012 was 13.5% greater than 2011. We know what 2012 is. 2012, which country? These are different countries. For Russia, the last one. Russia. So it's, it's 247 here, it says, but it's actually 220, it's actually 2012. It's actually 24.7. So we are told that 24.7 represents a figure that is 13.5% greater then the figure for 2011. So if we call 2011, let's call it X. And since this figure is 13.5% greater than X, then that means that this figure 24.7 must equal 100% of X plus another 13.5%. There you go. So this is one way of doing it. This is a very classical way of doing it. You pick up a calculator because you will need the calculator for something like this. You pick up a calculator, figure out what X is by dividing two 24.7 by this number. Once you have the value of x, you take a look at the difference between the two and you find the difference to the nearest integer. They're looking for the nearest integer. So that's one way of doing it. Let me first finish writing the problem. So it says 2012 was 13.5% greater than 2011. We already know that 2012 is 24.7 and the question is uh, what's the value what it, what it actually says in the problem is what it actually says in the problem is that 2012 is k million k 
million greater than 2011. 2012 is k million greater than 2011 and the question is what's the value of k what's the value of k to the nearest integer this is what we're looking for what's the value of k to the nearest integer so as we already went through it the classical way which is simply set it up one more time you simply call this x 2011 so it's going to be 1.135 x must equal 2012 which is this divide this number by that number figure out what x is which is 2011 figure out the difference and whatever the difference is you pick the nearest integer simple enough if that's all you're looking for then we are done you can stop the video you're done I'm going to share with you for those of you who are interested I'm going to share with you what went through my mind how I approached the problem because this is not how I did it there is nothing wrong with it there is, no, no, there is absolutely nothing wrong with it if this is the way you want to go as I said you're done but let me allow let, let me let me tell you what what, what through my, what went through my mind you might learn something out of it so again we're looking for the nearest integer remember that okay now I'm just going to start from the very beginning as to as I, as I read this thing what went through my mind I hope that you understand I hope that you you know that one is four percent of 25 and if you didn't know that part this is the starting point if you didn't know that part I'm going to make it even easier for you let's start with the fundamental let's start with the very basic let's start with the very basic multiply both sides by 4 and now you will see immediately that it makes sense 4 4 is 4% 4 of 100 of course you agree with this if 4 is 4% 4 of 100 then 1 must be 4% of 25 Okay, so that's the starting point. So let's pick up the speed now. If one is if one is four percent of twenty-five, if one is four percent of twenty-five, that must mean the two is eight percent of twenty-five. And similarly, three must be twelve percent of twenty-five. Now you understand we're dealing with twenty-five. We're not interested in thirteen and a half percent of twenty-five. We want to find out we want to find out what that guy is, starting point. So that when we take a 13.5% of that and add it to that amount, we get 25. I understand that. But this is a starting point. So my thinking was, my thinking was, if 3, if 3 is exactly 12% of 25, then it is reasonable, it is reasonable to assume that 3 is approximately 13.5% of 22. So what I did was the, what I did was this thing. I first of all rounded this figure because I don't like this 24.7 business in my mind I just rounded it to 25 and I said to myself if we ended up at 25 if we ended up at 25 after a 13 and a half percent increase after 13 and a half percent increase we must have begun in 2011 in 2011 we must have begun at 22 that figure that figure that we're looking for for 2011 must have been 22 approximately we went from 22 to 25 and since, since they're looking for the increase in the nearest integer well the answer is 3 so that's the difference 25 and 23 we started from 22 and we ended up at 25 the answer is 3 to the nearest integer and the reason why I was a little bit I was so cocky in the whole thing is because again you have to understand what, I, what, what what's going through my mind is because since we're looking for the nearest integer, it has to be either 2 or 3 or 4 or something like that. Well, it can be 2 because 2 would be too small. We just saw it. 2 represents 8% of 25. So 2 is going to be just a little bit more than 8%, around 9%. It's going to be around 9% of 25, or uh, 22 rather. 2 is too small and 4 is going to be too large because 4 is 16% of 25. It's too large. It has to be 3. Now what I'm going to do at this point is to demonstrate to you that this is in fact true that 3 is indeed approximately 13 and a half percent of 22 shall we do that let's do that okay so we're looking for 3 as a percentage of 22 and what we have to demonstrate is that this figure when we multiply it by 100 it becomes into percentage and we have to demonstrate that this is this works out to be about 13 and a half percent that's what we have to demonstrate so I'm, I'm going to show it to you let's divide top and bottom by 2 so it becomes 11 and this becomes 50 
Now just divide one more time top and bottom by 11. You divide top and bottom by 11, 11 goes away and 50 has 4 11. 4 11 is a 44. After we take away 44 from 50, we have a remainder of 6. 6 to 11, there you go. This is what we get here times 3. Voila. This amount has to be approximately 13 and a half. And let's, let's, take, let's take a look at it. 3 times 4 and 6 to 11. You with me? 3 times 4 is 12. Plus 3 times 6 would be 18. 18, 11. Which is same as 13. We take away 11 from here. 13 and 7, 11. Which is approximately 13 and a half. Voila. That's why the answer is 3. We must have gone from 22 to 23. And that's all there is. No. If you don't like this business of how we how we demonstrated, another way we could have shown is that instead of showing instead of showing that three is approximately instead of showing that three is approximately thirteen and a half or twenty-two, another way we could we could have approached the whole thing is to simply ask ourselves simply ask ourselves what is thirteen and a half percent of twenty-two. So that's one way of approaching it. This other way, instead of a, instead of claiming that three is approximately thirteen and a half percent of twenty-two, simply ask ourselves, what is thirteen and a half percent of twenty-two? Because working assumption here is that the starting point must have been twenty-two. That we already established that because three represents twelve percent of twenty-five. Since we're starting with a lower number, then that three, if if three is twelve percent of twenty-five, three must be something more than 12%, maybe 13.5%. So that's our claim, the three must, three must represent about 13.5% of 22, the starting point. Right here. Let's find out very quickly. Okay, let's find out very quickly. Let's see how do we want to go about it. Let's start, let's, let's, let's start with something simple. 10%, 10% of 22 is going to be 2.2. 10% is 2.2, 1% of 22 must be 0.22. If 1% is 0.22, 3% must be 0 0.66. 0 0.22 times 3, which is 0 0.66. So we have 13% so far. And therefore half a percent, one more half a percent, we just established that 1% is 0.22, therefore half a percent must be 0.11. Let's set them up, shall we? Let's set them up and see what we get. And you will see what we get. We get here 7. 6, 8, 9, there you go, 9, there, voila, what do you know? What do you know? It turns out that our claim, our claim was that 3 is approximately 13.5% of 22. It turns out that 2.97 is exactly 13.5% of 22. So 3, we're not that far off. The answer is 3. Other we could have demonstrated, I'm going to erase this part so I can, I can continue this part here. Now again, in reality, if I were doing it, and that's, that's, you're, then that is correct, that's how we speak, if I were doing it, if I were doing it, that is the proper English, that is the proper grammar, because it is a hypothetical situation, not if I was. If I, if I were doing it, if I were doing it, I really wouldn't have done this precise calculation. Let me show you how I would have figured out what is 13.5% of 22 right here. 13.5% of 22. So, 10%, 10%, percent is 2.2. What I would have done is that I would have just approximately approximated as two and a quarter, two and a quarter. 2.2 is two and a quarter. 1%, 1% is 0.22, which I would have approximated as quarter percent. 0.22 is same as 0.25. We don't have 1%, we have 3%. So it'll be three times that. So that's already 13%. And since we are rounding this up from 0.22 to point, since we are rounding this 0.22 to 0.25 as a quarter, same thing here, I wouldn't have bothered the last half a percent. And there you go, we're done. Two and a quarter percent and three quarter percent. Two and a quarter and three quarter is three. Three quarter and two and a quarter is three. So no matter which way you look, it always confirms our gut feeling that if 3 is 12% of 25, and there is no if about it, because it is, it is a fact. 3 is 12% of 25, because 1, 
1 is 4% of 25, 2 is 8% of 25, therefore 3 must be 12% of 25, then 3 should be approximately 13% or something a little bit more than 12%, about 13%, maybe 13.5% of 22. Because we have, we have to, so we are starting out with a difference of 3, from 22 to 25, that's all it is. That was the end of it. That's how I approached it. I don't know how much you, what you got out of it, whether you found it uh, interesting or whether you thought, whether you thought that I was um, cuckoo. It's up to you. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, if you are if you are in for more insanity, I'll be here for the next dose where we'll start the new new exam, exam number eight, I believe, is the next one because they're going in reverse order from ten nine to eight. We'll begin this tomorrow. If you wish to get hold of me, you can always get hold of me at Kishwani Prep iCloud.com by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at iCloud.com or you can simply visit my website at kishwaniprep.com. Right? Bye now.